Thank you. <coughs> well, uh, you're going to have to put up with the second team here today. Uh, Matt is uh, sick, and uh, I don't know, uh, he was pretty, uh, wasn't too well off last night when I talked to him. <coughs> so, uh, uh, I'm not very good at this, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I don't mind talking to a crowd of people, but uh, uh, when it comes to uh, making up a sermon, I'm pretty uh, pretty far down the list. Let me ask you, uh, I've got a, a riddle for you this morning, and probably you'll know it. Uh, what is the one thing that you possess, no matter where you live, no matter how rich or poor you are, you have it in your possession as long as you live, and uh, it can be either a blessing or a per curse to you? Anybody have an idea? Hmm? Maybe? Family? <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that could be a blessing or a curse, yes. Well, how about time? <clears throat> time is something we all possess. Uh, it's uh, We can't borrow it. We can't steal it from anybody. A lot of us never have enough of it. Some of us have more than we need. But uh, it's, uh, it's something that, that we have in our lives that God's given to us. And it can be either a blessing or a curse, depending on how we use it. Uh, so what are we doing with our time, with this that we possess? Now, our life and our ti and time are combined. We are creatures of time. Uh, we don't understand the uh, how things can exist without time. But time is, is intricate, is intrinsic to, to our being. But we can use it wisely or we can squander it. Um, we can use our time efficiently or we can just run out the clock and, and uh, watch time fade away. It's all up to us. We can send, spend our time living as God would have us to live it or we can live it unwisely and, and ignore God. read a quote and... and some of you probably know this, some that were teenagers back in the 70s. I see, let's see, there's one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, who remembers David Cassidy? Okay, well, okay. Yeah, a lot of you do. He was on, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Partridge Family. Yeah, there we go. He was on the Partridge Family. He died back in November. November the 21st of this year, he died uh, from complications of dementia. And I understand maybe some alcohol abuse in there with it. But uh, said uh, his daughter posted his last words online. I read them in a tweet. Uh, words can't express the solace our family received from all the love and support during this time. My father's last words were, so much wasted time. Um, kind of gives you a chill, doesn't it? Why would somebody say, so much wasted time is their last words? That, to me, it's extremely sad. Um, but it kind of hits us in the face like a cold cup of water, doesn't it? Somebody's splashing it. So much wasted time. It's a sad commentary on one's life when that's all he has to say. So compare that with what Jesus said from the cross. Does anybody remember his final words? It's finished. It is finished. He knew how to use his time. He came to this earth with a purpose in mind and he, he completed that purpose. And it was finished. I want to talk to you today about the uh, passage of James 4, 13, and 14. 
There we go. Now listen. I want uh, you who say today or tomorrow we will go and and uh, uh, travel and do such. I'm reading from a different version here, so let me just read up here. Now listen, you who say tomorrow, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there and carry on business and make money. And for and fifteen. Why do you not? Why do you not kn even know? What will happen tomorrow? This is what is your life? You are a mist, and the King James says a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Anybody ever watch the steam on a come out of a kettle, tea kettle? It comes out with a little bit of steam and it it's gone. That's exactly the image that uh, James is portraying here. We we come to this earth and and it's and we're gone. We have a short time, short time to do what we need to do. It's um, it's certainly um, mind blowing when you think that God in eternity. Do we have a, a hard time with eternity? Eternity is the absence of time. God is eternal. God existed before this world whether it's whether you think it's 6000 years ago or whether you think it's 14 billion years ago god was here before that and there was no time and there is no time with god when we finish we're gone we're here and then we're gone hard to comprehend sometimes but that's the way our life is This comment uh, goes to the thought that uh, we have such a short time, and time is our blessing. Ultimately, each one of us will have to determine what we do with the blessing that we, we are given and the time we possess. So let's start with verse 13. Now come, you who say, tomorrow, today or tomorrow we will travel to such and such a city and spend a year there and do business and make a profit. Well, this is this is all what I'm going to do, right? A actually, this this passage also speaks to the the idea of boasting. Boasting about what you're going to do on your own without God, you do it. Uh, uh, I do it. I'm. Uh, it's all my work. It's all my uh, ability that gets me there. But it also has to do with our time how we spend the time that we have. And so where does God fit into all of this? Well, it's one thing to say that we belong to Jesus, but it's another to live it out in our daily lives. James offers a real-life scenario here where he uh, speaks of a business person who's going to make some plans about uh, his immediate future, and he's speaking to his uh, comrades and says, uh, well, we're going to go uh, do this and such. And we'll make a lot of money. So before we uh, get into the, the real nitty-gritty here of this, I want to point out that uh, this section is not a condemnation of doing business, and it's not a condemnation of seeking to make a profit. Uh, it's not even condemning the concept of desiring better life. It's a all about where does God fit into the pattern of what you have and the plans that you're making. How does he fit into those plans? In this mo this morning, I want to talk about uh, I'm equating life with time because they are intimately connected, as I said. We can't, we really can't comprehend life without time. But the Jewish merchants were known for traveling far and wide in that day and time for, uh, and for doing business because of all the, uh, the fine road system, the unity of language that the Romans had established, very much like today. Uh, we have worldwide, English is recognized as the language. Uh, airline pilots use it. Uh, even 
foreign speaking airline pilots use English. It's, it's our, uh, and, th and the Romans had a much the same system. So it was, wide, it was well known what, what Christ was talking about. So back to this first question, where does God fit in? Uh, this uh, scenario that James uh, presents here indicates that uh, that this was a a standard procedure for this fellow. He didn't just uh, happen that instant to forget God. He ignored God. All of these things were uh, were involved. He he had to know. He speaks of when he's going to go. Uh, where they will travel, uh, how long they will be there, how much money they will be making, why they are going. All of these things were in his plan, and he was full of confidence that they would be ex executed. But it, it's really easy sometimes to forget, isn't it? Where do we fit God in? Jesus told a story also about a successful farmer in Luke 12, 18, and 20, the farmer said, uh, I think we have it up there. This is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns. I'm, I'm, I'm wealthy now. I've made a lot of money. So uh, I got a lot of goods. I'll tear down my barns, and I'll build bigger ones. I'll store all my grain. And I'll say to myself, relax. Take it easy. Now, this is not what that says, but this is what he was thinking. I'm ready to retire. I got a lot of money. I got a lot of goods. I can put them in a barn. I can sell them off as I go. Sit back and take it easy. You got many years, many years to take, uh, take in the good life. And the farmer has his retirement all planned out. What does God say? Look at verse 20. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your, your life is demanded of you, and the things you've prepared, whose will they be then? You see, this world is temporary. We forget that so much. This world is temporary. And we all have so much stuff, so much stuff. And we always collect more. We're out to collect more. And I'm, <laughs> believe me, when you point at somebody else, you've got four fingers pointing back toward yourself. Uh, we all have this, this problem of, of uh, trying to attain goods during our time here rather than spending it usefully. Now, God's not being unkind to the, to the farmer here when he says, uh, uh, you fool, this, this night your life is demanded of you. He's, he's just stating a fact. The point is the farmer ignored the, the person who helped him get what he had in the first place. So where does God fit in your life? Will you decide to spend the blessings of your time with uh, no room for God and his will for your life? <coughs> Back to James verse 14. Four, uh, chapter 4 and verse 14. Uh, this verse shows the way we should go. The way we... The way a wise person would not go. Excuse me. Yet you do not know what tom tomorrow will bring. Your life is but a vapor. For you are like a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Part of the folly of trying to figure out how to use the blessing of time without regard for God's will is the fact that we don't know what tomorrow will bring. How can you know what the future will be if you don't talk to the fellow who knows? <coughs> it seems foolish to plan to use the use of our time when we don't have any, any knowledge of, that, of what's going to happen. Have you ever made some plans for a big event in your life and had circumstances beyond your control take over and 
then you've spent a lot of money and a lot of time for something that never happens. Well, I, th I think we probably all have had that experience sometime or another. So it's it's a certain certainly a folly to try to plan, make plans, hard and fast rules for our lives without talking to God about it. <coughs> but don't get me wrong, it's not wrong to plan. It's wrong to plan without thinking that maybe God has other ideas. Um, this parable that Jesus told about the farmer, God had blessed the farmer in a big way, and yet the farmer, all the farmer could think of was himself. I will build big, bigger barns. I will take it easy. I have done this. I have, I have made a lot of money. That's, that's the way some people think. Ephesians uh, 2.10, Paul said, We are his workmen, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. We have a purpose in this life. We have, we have opportunities. We need to take advantage of them. We need to spend our time wisely doing what God intended us to, to be here for. You know, uh, I tell, told the story several times. Probably all of you know it, so it's getting old. Old people have a tendency to do that. If any of you ever knew John Crawford here in town, John told me 500 times how many times he flew across, across Texas in a plane back during World War II. We forget. We forget whether we're told, but I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> some of you didn't know. Some of you don't know, so I'm going to tell you. Rosie and I came uh, to this part of the country. Uh, our daughter lived over in, uh, uh, Macon, in Jackson County, and we came to visit. We had an RV. We had a 31-foot uh, Airstream trailer. We were going to spend a couple of years. We bought a truck that we could build, buy a bigger one and <coughs> spend some more time. Uh, we were going to go on the road and not live, uh, just live in our, our RV for a couple of years, enjoy the world, see, the, see all the sights. We got to uh, Jackson County. We were, were staying at the uh, campground. And uh, one afternoon, we didn't have anything to do. But our daughter was not there, so we said, well, let's go see what the price of houses are. Let's just look around. You know, we, a couple of years we're going to want to buy. We ought to have an idea of what the price of houses are around here. So we did, and uh, two weeks later, we bought a house. After the fact, after we'd made the deal, we said, wait a minute. This isn't what we planned to do. What's crazy about it? What, what's wrong here? We, uh, we didn't realize that uh, God wanted us here. And uh, I'm glad he did. But uh, <clears throat> the week we got our furniture up here from Dallas, our daughter was diagnosed with breast cancer. And... Uh, <coughs> She passed away two years later. But uh, that's not the first time it had happened. It had happened to us before. It happened to us with Rosie's folks. We had no intention of going back to Texas. Our folks had passed away, and uh, uh, we were happy. We'd built a new house in Florida. We were planning to retire there. We had two and a half acres, and we were really happy. God wanted us somewhere else. So our, <coughs> excuse me, our plans sometimes get uh, uh, wrapped around the axle, so to speak. God has other plans, and we have to be willing to, to uh, go wherever, wherever we're needed. And that's what happens. So the question is, do you have a plan? Does, does God in your plans, do you have room for God in your plans? Are you willing to, to listen when those things happen? You know, we could have said, no, nah, we're going we're to go uh, travel anyway. 
We don't care what happens here. We're, we've made plans and we're going to follow our plans. But uh, that's, that's not the way a Christian thinks. So uh, we don't have a lot of time to waste. That's another point. God gives us one chance, and uh, we come this way one time, and we have to make the best of what we have. Jesus tells us to seek his kingdom first, and all these things will be added to us. God will take care of us. If we truly want to follow God, if we truly believe that, that Christ is with us, that his Holy Spirit lives in us, he'll take care of us. Uh, have you ever done a project uh, that you put a lot of time into and effort, maybe some money, and you get to almost finished with it and you find out you've done something wrong? So then you start over, and uh, you don't have time to finish it. You couldn't get the job done on time, or you finish with a, a real poor product when you do finish it. Life is too short to mess up that way. We have to be ready to take the opportunities that God gives us. So let's look at verse 15 in James 4. What should we say instead of uh, we're going to go and, and do this and so and, and uh, we'll make money here and there and I will do this, or I will do that. James 4.15 tells us what we should say. We should say, if the Lord wills, we'll live and do this or that. We submit to Christ. That's the, that's the whole duty of man, is to submit to Christ. You can submit to God. Throughout Paul's letter, he always had a plan. But he would always couch that in terms of if God wills it. His plans were always subject to God's changing those plans, and sometimes he changes our plans. James is offering a better way of how to plan the time that we have on this earth. The attitude of one who has given their life to Jesus will take the wishes of it and his plans into account concerning the future. Life is short. Life is short. Life is short. I can't ex express it enough. Uh, when you get to be my age, some of you, maybe, you realize how short time we really have on this earth. I was born, oh, 20 years or so after man first flew after the first flight of, of a mechanical vehicle on the beaches of North Carolina. I was born in 1936. I think the first flight was 1918. Less than 20 years from the time I was born. I helped put a man on the moon. Some people don't believe that happened. Talked to a lady this week that uh, told me that that never happened, that it was all photoshopped, uh, and, and, that the earth, and that the earth was flat. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't want to make fun of anybody's belief. If anybody here uh, has that belief, I don't want to make fun of it, but I may anyway. Uh, uh, it's, it's beyond me how people can believe that. But I can tell you for sure we put a man on the moon because I helped do it. Personal experience. But think how much has happened in those hundred years since the man, since the Wright brothers on that beach in, in North Carolina flew a, a mechanical airplane a hundred and something feet not even the distance of the wingspan of a Boeing 767. Less than, a, I mean, 100 feet. 
And here we are today, we fly supersonic. We've flown to space. We put uh, uh, satellites in space. How do you think your cell phone works? Uh, the, uh, or your GPS? Because of all those things we've done. And yet, it's a short time. It's, it's not even that much in God's sight. God is eternal. We are not yet eternal, but we will be. We have a promise from God that we can be eternal, that we can live eternally with Him. It'll be a glorious time. It's something to look forward to. It's not something to fear. Some people do fear it, and they have reason to, because they're not going to be there. If you ever, uh, I deal every day with people who who have no no belief in God, and and I'm coming to realize how how pitiful they really are. I won't tell them to their face they're pitiful, because that offends them, and I don't think we should offend them in our in our talking to them. Paul says we're to treat everyone with respect. We're to do it with kindness. We're to teach them with kindness. Sometimes they don't want to be taught. They don't want to learn. But they're there, and, and they have the attitude that, that I'm foolish because I believe in God. That's okay. Uh, that's, that's their problem, not mine. But they, they are unhappy people, most for the most part. They're very unhappy. Uh, and and they, they want to make everybody else as unhappy as they are. That's the whole gist of it, I guess, to the extent. But I'm here to tell you that we have a time. We have time on, that we can use to do what God wants us to do. We have time to serve others. And that, that's part of what we do. Even those that, that think we're foolish for doing so. We have the opportunity to serve them. <coughs> We've been given some instructions for our lives and how to use them. It's called the Bible. I've been doing a lot of reading lately on uh, uh, scientists who, who believe in Christ but are uh, particle physicists, uh, people who, who accept the fact that, uh, that this world was not did not come into complete uh, being in an instant. It grew. Uh, I've been reading that. It's quite interesting. Uh, these, the idea that uh, uh, evolution is the idea. And scientists have, there, there are, what I've been finding out is that there are two books God wrote two books. God created nature. God created time. And they don't conflict. Sometimes our interpretations conflict. But God didn't create something that was uh, contrary to his word. He didn't say something that was contrary to what actually exists. And we need to, to study those things and understand what God is telling us in some of the things that he says. But we have a, a, a guidebook. God has written a guidebook to us and given us what we need to do in our lives to be pleasing to him. <coughs> I don't know about you, but I don't want my final word to be so much wasted time. I want my final words to be, God, help me to have lived a life that was pleasing to you. I hope that I have those words. I hope I look forward to God's coming, to Christ, to his coming for me will be when I pass and see him. That's the time I look forward to. And I think that's the time we all should look forward to is when, when we're actually able to see Christ and God in the glory that he's promised. So if you waste your time in, in, 
and fruitless process, uh, pursuits, or will you make the most of your time and walk with Christ on this earth? That's the question. We all have a time that's given to us. Some pass earlier, some pass later. But it's not time to give up. There's never a time to give up. There's always the hope. There's always the opportunity. There's always the chance. I won't use it. Shouldn't use the word chance. There's not a chance. God's word is absolute. We've been told what what it means. We've been told what we need to do. We know that that there's a time coming when we won't have the opportunity to make our commitment to Christ. If you have a time, or if you have the the desire to follow Christ, to make a commitment to Him. If you haven't done so, now's the time to do it. Today is the time. We're, as I've said all along, the time is short. We don't have, maybe you think you have a bunch of years. Maybe you're, uh, uh, you think, well, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm healthy right now. I'll, I'll live, I'll do it some other day. You don't have that promise. None of us have the promise that we'll live till tomorrow. None of us have the promise we'll live till the next hour. We live by minute by minute throughout our lives. And we need to be ready every minute of our lives to meet God because that's what we will do. We'll meet Him. We'll be in His presence at some point. Whether we're allowed to stay in His presence or not depends on what we how we act in this life today. I'm asking anyone that, that has a need or has an op- wants the opportunity to uh, come forward today. We have a baptism. Uh, we have the baptistry. I won't promise you that it's ready, <laughs> but uh, we will make it ready. Right now it's probably, uh, what, you're on about 60 degrees up there? Uh, we have a uh, have had a problem for several years, and we uh, we just turn it on when we need to. But uh, uh, we'll make it ready if you want a baptism. If you want a life as with a Christian family, we have that to offer here. The uh, the membership here is uh, one of acceptance of working with the elders that are in place here. We ask you if you want to. Make your your membership known that uh, you do so. But uh, we have a uh, we don't uh, say that you're you have to be a member of this congregation in order to be a member of Christ Church. Christ Church is universal. We are a congregation of that church. We are a group of Christians who meet at this this place, and we strengthen each other and give each other. Uh, encouragement throughout our lives and that's what we're here for so if you need prayers or if you need to make a a, a conscious effort to be a member of this congregation then you're welcome now but otherwise if if the the, uh, uh, group will come forward uh, we'll offer you the the opportunity right now to to become a member or or to be baptized. We uh, we hope that uh, uh, we meet all the needs of those who uh, who want to be a member, want to be part of this congregation. We're glad to have you. Would you stand?